Oh, uh, oh. <clears throat> well, this video is my uh, 600th uh, video on my channel. Um, I know there are some videos I have that are private because, well, they just aren't good. And, uh, yeah, I, like I didn't delete them, but they're just private. So who knows? Maybe one day I might think just to uh, make them public again or something or unlist them and put them in a certain playlist. Um, but <clears throat> regardless, you know, this is uh, my 600th video and you know, going through the Predator films uh, overall, <clears throat> which is a, a pretty cool and fun to do uh able to look back on which ones i found to be very disappointing or not very good and if i still think that after some time has passed um and yeah it's just pretty fun to do uh, of going through some movies where at one point you were sort of like or you had uh had thoughts about a movie uh being you know disappointing or not as good as uh the original or uh, previous installments um or if perhaps you still have you know uh, certain opinions and they haven't changed um you know, stuff like that. Uh, and overall, the Predator movies are pretty entertaining, pretty fun. Like, in terms of the action and everything, that's always uh, nice. So, yeah. I, uh, I've been uh, doing that lately, as well as looking at some other movies that I want to talk about that I haven't. And, uh, yeah. Also, it might be good to, again, mention, like, you know, I've written some books. Here's my Western. and um, There's a feature on Amazon to, you know, have a different versions, like, like, of it, of the same book. So they're not always consistently updating like the transcript or whatever they call it uh, for uh, the book so I have one where it's bigger like all this is bigger it's not so small and also there's page numbers because on another version all that happens is uh, there's like a page number at the top for the, the chapters, which is nice and all, but at the same time, it's like there's no other pages, unfortunately. But I've, I have uh, I have an update of that, and I'm gonna look more into the whole uh, different versions of it. Uh, that way, uh, the the version I really want uh, is there, and, and for the most part, I really haven't changed too much, other than add a few things here or there. That way, a couple things are a little clearer, as well as it just helps uh, makes like certain sections where they had a you know be uh, comfort. Uh, <clears throat> Changed a bit because what do you know? You change the sort of uh, oh, what is it called? Um, yeah, you know, a certain height and width and all that, and has also changed like how big the text should be. You know, not too big, but also not too small in order for it to fit for Amazon's uh, you know books, hardback or paperback. Um, made sure to 
make it as good as it possibly can so uh, you could find that in the you know there's a LinkedIn uh, 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 link of all the stuff like this book is there for Amazon as well as this book short stories though I guess in a way it doesn't seem like they are short exactly but I can assure you before I um, redid the whole uh, sizing and formatting I guess that's what I meant for that formatting for this this uh, wasn't uh, over 200 pages as it is now so in a way, it, it, it's supposed to be a short story, but because of the formatting, he had to go and do. It seems to be more like novellas, if anything else. But, you know, I wanted to try and do something a bit different. And here the formatting is better, because the words aren't as small. And, yeah, and there are page uh, numbers, though I, I have since made sure to put that back at the bottom and stuff I'm writing a new book so I have it so it's more like this and then in my next book will be more like a murder mystery crime thriller type book with some horror elements um, like you, if, if you've ever seen the film Zodiac that's kind of what I want to sort of do for the tone because for the first hour it is pretty uh, eerie and most horror movie like so that's what I kind of want to capture for my next book like a crime thriller horror uh, mystery uh, hopefully all that will be good um, I've been over a hundred pages for some time now so that's always a good thing and uh, you know, it's always best to, when writing like a book or something, to write like a hundred or a thousand pages or a thousand pages, a thousand words a day. Yeah, a th or write a thousand pages a day. You know. Well, if that was the case, I'd probably have it done by now. I don't know how many uh, pages that book will be, uh, but you know, I don't want to talk about it too much because, you know, I'm still working process and I have it all planned out for how I want everything to culminate in its ending so that's always good some authors don't have a don't always do that I've heard Stephen King um, sort of flies on the seat of it off of the seat of his pants in this terms of writing and doesn't really have an ending and that's part of the reason why people you know for the most part they enjoy the book but when it comes to the ending they're disappointed because it's like just ends like there's a resolution but it's just like abrupt or perhaps feels rushed or whatever the case may be but it doesn't seem to be either earned or it seems like that should exactly be the conclusion that the book has been leading towards because of everything from the story and the characters um, like it just ends and then Though some stories and some of his books I've heard that people do enjoy the ending because it's good. Um, I actually have never read a Stephen King book, which might shock some people, but I haven't. Uh, nothing against the man or the work. I've seen various films that he has done, but I've also heard quite a bit about the books and the comparison for various films and how... You know, whenever Frank Darabont would make a film based off of a book, like those movies are basically as close to the book as possible. So if you want as faithful of an adaptation of a Stephen King book, then watch The Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, and um, The Mist. He made those films, and those are basically the absolutely uh, most faithful of basically everything that has ever been adapted for the screen uh, <clears throat> by uh, uh, with a Stephen King book or story um, but you know that's always uh, cool um, 
So that's something that I've been working on also with the books. But, you know, and again, I've heard for those you know, last thing about the Stephen King stuff, like, you know, um, you know, people will, will often talk about what is different in, from the film to book. Like the Shining is a big example of that and how Kubrick did a lot of different things and Cooper and then or King was not happy with them. And I've talked about the Shining film before, and I still think it's a very good film. Though I have, you know, give a critique like how Shelley Duvall, you know, was in the film. And, and I've often gone back and forth because, on one hand, I'm not the biggest fan of the performance she gives. But of course, there's the acknowledgement. I don't know if I've really been clear on this in the past. It's been some time since I've made my, that video about the Shining. Um, but, you know, uh, Kubrick would sort of, like, berate her and try to get her to do a certain kind of performance when she wasn't giving it to him. So he would be very, like, you know, he would just be very upset with her and uh, not treat her very well to the point where uh, she was so stressed out she was losing hair and she gave it to him and held it in front of the camera for the documentary. Um... And so it's like, you know, with with that in mind, obviously, with this, those certain kind of circumstances, it's not shocking that she wasn't giving as good of a performance as she could. But then also, if she isn't giving the performance that Kubrick wants, and if it takes uh, him to basically be uh, berating her, you know, verbally, just get a different actress get a different woman who you know after like maybe a few days or even a week or so because you should be able to find out early on in the filming process with somebody that okay this person is not working out in this part thanks for you know uh coming and making this film for us with a week and then but then you know part ways and find a different actress who, you know, would fit the part better. And, um, it, that just didn't seem to enter Kubrick's mind, or if it did, he, I guess, just thought, no, this is going to be fine, no, it's not going to be a problem, but it did, uh, end up being a problem and, uh, more ways than one uh, but that all aside um, I guess that wasn't completely totally related to the whole book thing but yeah other than you know I, I have a story <laughs> from beginning to end that I am following with this new book and uh, yeah and also you can in the LinkedIn uh, uh, link in the description you can uh, look there and Find this book, you know, uh, paperbacks are both under 20 bucks, as are the hardbacks. Well, the hardback, or our hard covers, I should say, are a little more expensive, but you know, uh, but again, it's hardcover, so it would be a bit more expensive anyway. And so, under $20, but you know, definitely more than 10, so. I haven't checked. I, have, I haven't looked at it again in some time, but yeah, I sort of forget exactly uh, the prices all all the time, which is probably a bad thing. But you know, you can look and see if the descriptions and everything are of the, these books and what's in them if they're worth anything to you or not. But yeah, so there is that. Oh, so I guess the other thing I want to mention is, you know, uh, I've mentioned how I wanted to make films before and still do. And I, uh, uh, the, the one movie that I have that I, I've written that I think would be pretty good for like a first time movie would be this film about, uh, a drug addict trying to overcome 
uh, his addictions and uh, also sort of imploding it in on himself. Like things are going well, so he's gonna like self destruct, which happens um, with really anything. He doesn't have to be drugs or alcohol or whatever, but sometimes people just have that in them, or in some cases, it's just their personality. But with this character, it's he's a uh, addicted to drugs and other things and so when things seem to be going well in his life sort of you know self-destructs and he's had a he's got a new girlfriend in this uh, film that I've written and you know he's sober for a good while but then she leaves for a period to help with the family out of town so for a few days or so, things seem to be fine, but then after a while, you know, he just gets it in his head that things are gonna fall apart, and then he makes things fall apart by, you know, delving back into doing drugs and stuff, so. In a way, it's sort of, in, in an aspect, it's sort of like The Fighter, with the scenes with Christian Bale, with the documentary crew, because I have a documentary crew doing like a documentary on this guy and about you know uh drug addiction or whatever like these people want to make something and so what do they make they're they talk to him and they're gonna do something about drug addiction um and that's a premise for a film that you know i've obviously i've written it but the premise of it overall it seems to be not that I don't think that's that bad, and some people say that's good. Some aren't interested in it, because, you know, they're interested in other things, which, which is fine. Um, but I've also noticed some people are like, you know, they're you know, willing to help out and all this stuff, and then when you give a generalized uh, uh, synopsis of what your movie is or whatever, oh, they, they aren't interested or... They like to help uh, help out with that, but then they don't really do anything, and they cut communications, and that's always annoying. And then there are some people who say, well, we'll just do like a, a crowdfunding thing. Well, uh, the reality of that uh, these days is, unless you have a pretty big following on on the internet, be it social media or YouTube, which I guess some people consider YouTube social media, but other people don't. Like if it's a video hosting site where you can upload videos, it's not exactly social media. So there's a discussion there as to whether it is, a, you know, a social media uh, platform or not. Regardless, uh, like if you, like if I had like a, a a thousand subscribers or over a thousand subscribers, I think that would be good enough to actually sort of begin the process and uh, thinking of having a crowdfunding thing. And then, of course, you know, if someone donates a certain amount of money, you obviously have to have something in to give them in return because, you know, those, uh, you know, those, uh, sites uh don't just let you have uh, uh, uh have a certain amount of money and then with not really anything in return for people so you know you'd have to figure out uh, how much money should be separated like donate five dollars or ten or fifteen or twenty or you know whatever the case may be and then what would an appropriate sort of like a reward or something of the sort uh, be for uh, uh, donating a, a certain amount of money? And, and that's something I've sort of wondered over too. Like even if I do have a, got like a thousand subscribers someday and all that stuff to the point where I can make a movie like that uh, with... Uh, subscribers uh donating five ten fifteen or twenty bucks and i have also uh, on top of that like a 
the the views are always like fairly consistent like you know like you get like about a thousand views or so and and, and regular engagement so that way you know that people are watching whatever you're making like for videos and stuff and that way you can have a crowdfunding campaign uh, actually work um, some people don't seem to understand that unless you have a pretty decent sized following that uh, consistently uh, watches your stuff on a, a regular basis uh, or at least fairly regular basis to where the views and engagement is all basically the same uh, across the board. You're, you're kind of on your own. You don't get to have um, uh, the being able to uh, have a crowdfunding campaign to make like a movie or something because if you, you know, I have over... 400 subscribers which I'm thankful for so everybody who subscribed and watches uh, my stuff I'm happy and of course it's taken uh, over 10 years for, for me to get to this uh, point because for a good while I wasn't really making videos I was in high school and so whatever video ideas I had you know either never came to be or if they did come to be they're now private because they were pretty bad um, and then when I did begin to make videos on a fairly regular basis, you know, early on when I was going to do this more uh, pretty regular, I didn't know at all what I was going to do. And it was only later that I thought, I'll just talk about movies because that's something I like and it's something that people can talk about and stuff. Like, and there's an engagement there, whether you like a movie or dislike it and agree with certain things I say or disagree or whatever the case may be um, and I generally nowadays just talk about stuff I like because it's more fun to talk about stuff that I do like as opposed to things like if you don't like something which always gets people's uh, uh, attention more than say if you like uh, this movie yeah you'll get some engagement but it's, if you're disliking something you're going to get a lot more engagement you know, there's a lot of people who have sort of built um, on the disliking of like the uh, Disney Star Wars movies. And while I'm not the biggest fan of that trilogy, as I sort of I made it fairly clear in various videos, there's people who've made video after video after video about those movies. And I'm like, you know, if you make one or two, that's one thing, because maybe you, after one video you realize you have a few more things you want to say. But after a while, it's like you just stop and move on and do something else. But, you know, if you do that, then you start to lose engagement. And then people who came for that aren't getting that. And then some will leave because they only want that. They don't want to stay for anything else you have to say. And so for me, I want to talk about stuff I like. I don't want to just have a bunch of stuff that's negative and you know I have uh, talked about films that I'm not f fond of or if it's part of a franchise I'm like there are certain entries in a franchise I'm not the biggest fan of um, but I try to give positives where I can um, uh, with those kind of videos because you know, even if you're not fond of something, usually there's something that you can see that is good, like be it a performance or uh, the music or something. Um, uh, something is generally looked at as being good. Uh, so that's basically what, you know, I try to do. I try to talk about stuff that I like might occasionally if it's part of a franchise talk about something i'm not the biggest fan of and give my reasons but i also try to be as positive as i can be um, and point out what i do like but again sometimes that's a bit difficult um but i don't want to just be one of those people who just does that all the time because 
yeah, you can do a lot of stuff that's negative and get a lot of views and subscribers and followers on various places. But then when you want to talk about something that's you enjoy and you like and all this, if there's not a fair balance of that, you then begin to get uh, less interactions and that's not fun. And if you want to make a movie and you have like a script and stuff and there's a certain budget that you have in mind and you're able to figure out certain like certain goals when or something like uh, you'll people will get in return when they donate a certain amount of money when you've got that figured out you can then go and uh, find out that you uh, you know uh, you're able to do that uh, uh, pretty successfully uh, like if you just do negative stuff all the time that's I don't see that as a being a bit uh, uh, a great thing honestly I don't see that being a real benefit to anything when it's just predominantly negative um, I mean sure people do watch that stuff you know and I have but I try to lean into stuff that's more positive and more entertaining and all that stuff not stuff that I'm probably not going to be fond of whatever this film is or whatever or I know I don't like this movie so I'm going to talk about it and this and that I just want to try and be uh, as uh, as good as I possibly can be and uh, have a pretty uh, fine uh, uh, good amount of following like for subscribers and such where it's all fairly consistent in uh, engagement and uh, you know I'll try to share uh, uh, my videos wherever I can on social media though I do know sometimes engagement in some videos and stuff won't get very you know far you know people are looking at a bunch of stuff and if, uh, what you have posted and stuff isn't what people are interested in and they're either gonna pass over it or I've noticed sometimes people will just like something because like oh I like that movie or oh, I like this film like you know the Predators for instance doing that lately like, oh I posted on Twitter or uh, Facebook or whatever uh, uh, my, the link to pre my Predator video you know, it might get somewhere, might, might get a like or two on either place, you know. I find when I do that on uh, Facebook, I often uh, do it in multiple various groups. I mean, like for movie groups, because I think that's a good way for engagement. I don't really do that much on my personal profile because... You know, a lot of the friends who might be interested in that won't see it, uh, just because of how Facebook is anymore, <clears throat> where you don't get to see everything right away as it's new. It's whatever has the most likes and and or comments and, and most engagement and all that stuff. And so, excuse me. Sometimes it's just articles and things that are just kind of that are just weird and odd and like I don't really have much interest in and neither do necessarily a whole lot of other people but there's enough engagement with that that people that see it first and so the way that has gone in within the last decade or so is kind of sad for Facebook and it's also partially why people don't really use Facebook anymore um I use it to post my videos in these groups, and lately I have sort of slowly began to post it in uh, my feed just to see if there's any engagement there, because 
There could be if you have like some hundred friends, you know, maybe they'll see that video and like, like it and actually watch it too. And not just like, oh, I like Predator. Just like that. Cause that's happened before where there's a good number of likes to a video in a certain group or whatever, or various groups. And there's different people you can tell that aren't all in the same group. And then when you go to look at the, like an engagement on YouTube, there's like a couple of views compared to like, say like if there's like in one group that video got like 10 likes and another maybe 20 or whatever, you think, oh, at least 30 people watched it. Uh, no, like maybe five people watched it or at most 10. And then you're just confused and are wondering, well, oh, what, what happened there? And that just happens and also a lot of my videos are also <clears throat> not short so <laughs> that also has a thing to do with it like if it's like 10 to 15 minutes people generally do watch something beginning to end I've noticed you know if your video is a little over like 15 minutes being up to the max well then that's just you know in this video it's like it's about now 31 minutes. So, you know, this video, if I post it there, probably won't get much engagement. But I thought, you know, for my 600th video, I should do some sort of formal update of um, what I'm doing and what I've been doing recently and currently and what I hope to do. You know, I like to make my movie. It's just I don't have enough you know, of a dedicated following to where there's a regular engagement with the audience I do have here on YouTube as well as social media, like Twitter and Instagram, that people regularly uh, will watch and engage on with my, you know, uh, my stuff. And so <clears throat> from that, it's like, the idea of crowdfunding is out of the picture, or at least right now, it's not even, can't even come into the picture. Um, and so it's like, you gotta find ways to do stuff on your own and you wanna work with other people who have done similar stuff, but some people aren't interested in making that kind of movie. People aren't interested in making my kind of film or at least helping out. Um, and I'm not trying to make some sort of social statement or whatever a lot of people do. It's just a movie that's different. And and I would play, you know, the, like the drug addict in the movie because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in the movie anyway, no matter what. So might as well be the main character who was seen throughout the whole thing, especially because considering the film would probably be a low budget, <clears throat> pay for certain things, especially like it. Uh, probably have to uh, pay uh, to film at in certain locations. There's like a couple scenes at a that would be at some restaurant and a scene or two at a bar and just a few places that you know could be shot in a day or two <clears throat> and uh, you know would not be try to wouldn't be up overtly huge wouldn't have too many people but you know be taking up some time and so there would be definitely people noticing doing something uh if we didn't ask for permission so it's like you know have to not only ask for permission but probably have a good amount of money to at least be able to be like you know give you this much amount of money or whatever um because of what was raised and all that stuff so you know or but we have, regardless of crowdfunding was a thing or not. Um, and I heard from some people who are in the movie industry and such, or have definite ties where if your movie is under a million, you're not even going to make it. Yeah, it's never going to happen just because they don't. Apparently, uh, in the industry, even in the indie world, I guess if your movie is under a million dollars, there's like no hope for it. It's too low budget. It's not going to be seen 
by really anyone other than if it's streaming somewhere somebody might stumble upon it accidentally and you might get a view or two from that which i kind of think is kind of weird but you know i mean also if you're trying to get somebody to help produce the thing with you you know if it the lower the cost you know and if it's marketed pretty well and it's all done within under a million dollars uh, profits from if it's released properly because i would like it to be in theaters because you know why not like if this happened to be like the only movie i will ever make in my entire life and i will never be able to make one ever again for whatever reason and i would like it at least in theaters that way i can say my movie was released in theaters and not just going directly to streaming or selling on blu-rays and such like uh, things like that so That's just uh, some stuff that's going on um, that has been happening for a while with me, and I've been thinking about this, and I've mentioned before about Kickstarters and how that's not really a, that effective unless you have a big following, but I thought I should make something again with that because it's been a while, and seeing a lot of people just say, just do crowdfunding, just do crowdfunding, and it's like, if you don't have a huge audience, like if I had like at least a thousand subscribers with about a thousand people regularly watching my videos and commenting you know not that i have a, a like a thousand comments but just you know a good rater uh interaction with people from viewing it and also commenting then yeah sure i would definitely look at uh, a crowdfunding site and then see about what people would think would be appropriate uh, uh, things to be able to give to people if they donate a certain amount of money, you know, because that's what I would probably do, because I, uh, aside from just looking at what people have done in the past, I would also want to see what people, like my audience, would want as sort of a uh, prize, let's say, like, you know, behind the seat, some behind the scenes stuff that $15 or $20 or whatever the case may be, you know, plus with whatever else, the other sort of like donation goals you'll get too. It's just like one of those things, like you need to make sure people who gave a certain amount of money will receive this. And you also have to have realistic uh, stuff too, not just stuff like, oh, we'll get, uh, you'll get, receive this or that. Like you, you, you can't just be, you know, uh, over the top, basically. You gotta be realistic, and you have to make sure it's all the stuff that you put forward for people, like if they donate a certain amount, what they can receive before the actual, aside from the film at the end, which could be, depending on the kind of how big the movie would be and all that, like, aside from seeing it, could be anywhere from a some month some few months to a year or so you know just depending on how big it is and this film wouldn't be that big film probably for like a month or so at most and then edit and uh do all that stuff of mixing and making sure it looks as good as possible making sure people get the you know whatever it is certain behind the scenes stuff and if there's posters involved Make sure they get posters sent to them and all that stuff. And if they get like a Blu-ray or whatever, well, after the film would be out and released, you know, they they should be like amongst the very first people to get it because they donated money and they should get it first. Stuff like that. That's basically what I would be looking at if I had the kind of uh, engagement and uh sort of good social media following that would be actually required and needed in order for a crowdfunding campaign to work for making a movie. Because even if you are able to get in contact with some people who are in the industry or have ties or whatever, that doesn't always mean anything. You know, people say you do need a following and or to know people well you can know as many people as possible but sometimes that doesn't always help 
you know, I've been in contact with a bunch of people and uh, haven't really gone too far other than talking about this might happen, but at the end of it all, nothing does. So it's like, you know, just like, it, it seems like empty words. And, you know, I'm not going to address anybody because, well, who knows, maybe some of those people are genuine. It's just they taking a long time to get around to helping me, but I don't know if that will ever happen. If it doesn't, fine. It, dude, whatever. Uh, it's just I wish they were more up front of having no interest in actually working with me or helping me, because that's another thing. Some people act like they want to help out all these people and all this stuff, and then when it comes down to it, they don't. And uh, when it comes to people in Iowa, you know, there's people who are up front that are interested in doing their own thing, which is completely fine. No problem there, because, you know, they're up front, they want to do their own stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. Then there are others who sort of are like they want to help out and do all this stuff, and then... Which is... Uh, but then when you go to talk to them, it's like you, you either get no response or... The response you get is sort of like they're they're interested in all this and that, but then they don't really do anything with you. Like after a while, they'll just stop talking to you. So that happens quite a bit, and uh, and that's just annoying to have people say and make and or make promises that they'll work with you on this or that, and then they don't. So that kind of sucks. But, you know, if you're really interested and want to help people, you should actually do it. As opposed to just saying we want to help people, but then at the end of it all, you don't. But, yeah, you know, that's just some grievances I have. But, and also things I've noticed. Um, anyway, that's really it. Just wanted to have some updated sort of video in this sort of style. Uh, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope your week's going well. You'll have a great weekend and a great day also. And I'll see you all uh, next time. Take care. Bye.